I think this might be the first video I've uploaded here where I don't have my green screen up. It's this is Alana Pierce, a well-recognized journalist, creator, YouTuber, and critic in the video game space. And a few months ago in a video on Half-Life Alex, she said this. Right now, but I know there are people who are high up in the games industry who believe that basically video games right now are just movies with little interactive bits. And because of how limitless the tech is, because you can basically program anything you want to happen, video games aren't reaching their full potential. So I, I felt like I heard this sentiment about video games before, that the medium is still largely influenced from other visual mediums like film. I mean, look no further than some of the most critically acclaimed games of the past decade. But it's autumn, leaves are changing color, and gamers are all giddy about the new consoles, which has really made me reflective of where we are going into the ninth generation of home consoles. And while people are talking about haptic feedback and loading times and RTX 3080s and all of that great stuff, if someone were to ask me, what do you think will be in store for the future of video games? Well, my answer would be hopefully archeological storytelling. That's a term term I've just made up after I watched the video How Level Design Can Tell a Story by Game Maker's Toolkit, where he says, The cool thing about environmental storytelling is that it requires a certain level of deductive reasoning, as we connect up details to create an overall story. We use investigative and archaeological skills to determine relationships, cause and effect, and history. This makes us an active participant in the storytelling process and not just a passive viewer. The idea of archeological storytelling goes beyond what Mark Brown discusses in that video, that we're not just talking about level design or world design, but rather how we're going to approach narrative as a whole. And this idea is something that I found reflected to varying degrees in some of the games I've played and beaten this year, Dark Souls, Tacoma, and The Forest. So buckle up, and get out your dust pans and your desire to be Brandon Fraser digging through some dusty Egyptian tombs and crushing on Rachel Weiss's nerdy archaeologist character because unlike Lenny, we're on the right side of the river today. Archaeological storytelling is what I would describe as active storytelling that is non-linear or investigative, but often both. A really important divide in how we receive narrative in video games is the differences between an active role and a passive role that the gamer assumes. This is where Alana Pierce's point about the influence of film really comes into play. For good or for ill, a lot of popular games have largely relied on gamers being passive, of being observers, watchers, an audience, cutscenes by definition, or a scene cut out from gameplay. Many first party Sony games are notorious for whatever reason for being heavily reliant on uninteractive cinematic experiences. You hardly ever get to control, influence, interact, interface really at all with the protagonists during these story moments in some of these big first party AAA games. You're just reduced to observing them. You can still get really good stories delivered this way, but it's weird because sometimes it feels like you're watching a TV show or a movie, and why wouldn't we just watch a TV show or a movie? And it's not always about how the story is told, but when not done well, this passive storytelling can really make games feel off. Like where a game is just uh, a level with two cutscenes that bookend the gameplay, and that's the structure of the experience. We shoot, we drive, we solve a puzzle, then there's a cutscene that we suddenly don't get to interact with anymore and then there's another driving sequence and some shooting and some puzzling and then maybe some dialogue that we just sit there and watch and then there's a boss fight. This means that we're active but only during the parts of gameplay and we're reduced to just being somebody stuck in a theater when it actually comes to storytelling. Many typical western RPGs like that of Bioware are still linear games and they still kind of a go shoot drive solve a puzzle cutscene scene, but dialogue wheels or being able to make choices in dialogue really forces us suddenly to pay attention to things. 
You have to listen to what's being said, use knowledge that you've accumulated, kind of keep track of characters so you can ask questions, and sometimes it relies on the player knowledge to make the right choice, and not the character. And suddenly now you are a participant in the story that you are on stage with these characters telling the game how the plot is going to unfold within the confines of the medium. Games where choice and decision making is baked into narrative really forces the player to think and it's that critical thought that engages with us and then makes the story as a result more engaging. But we have to go beyond just that. And it's this extra step of non-linearity or investigation where storytelling really gets me excited and really makes games operate on an entirely unique level where archaeological storytelling comes into effect. Dark Souls is a great example of this category of game narrative. From Software gives you a brief opening cinematic and sprinkles a few throughout, but otherwise just says, hey, go figure it out. Through a combination of NPC conversations, item descriptions, places you travel to, enemies you fight, and factions you join, you piece together what exactly has happened to this world, Lordran, and Anne Orlando. When I was playing Dark Souls, I was constantly asking my friend who carried me throughout the entire game, hey, uh, what's this or what's that? or why is it this way? And sometimes he knew the answer, but a lot of the times he said, I don't know. Whether he couldn't remember from when he beat the game five years ago or he never bothered to find out. But it's when he didn't have an answer that I started to get really curious myself because Dark Souls wasn't just going to tell me. And I had to suddenly slow down and maybe try to take in what exactly is going on. That I had to piece together the story and the history myself. And that really stuck with me. And even though I don't have all the answers to Dark Souls, I still have super vivid memories of this game. And I'm still left wondering about it months later. When things started to really click for me was unfortunately kind of at the end of the game, but I started to see how my battle with the Firekeeper was the result of slaying Gwendolyn because he was pissed off that I called his bluff, and I just really appreciated how the game rewarded me for being an active participant in the world and the narrative, and they didn't just kind of serve it up on a platter that, oh, this decision has consequences, but rather everything kind of just felt like a natural evolution of the plot. This investigative approach is echoed in two other games I've played this year, Tacoma and The Forest. Both, I think, uphold the idea of archaeological storytelling, albeit in their own different ways from Dark Souls. Tacoma has you exploring an AI-controlled lunar space station as you're trying to figure out what exactly happened to its crew after an accident. So, what the hell was that? Odin, what was that? Much of the game comes from exploring a new section of the station and interacting with 3D recordings. I was immediately sucked in because, kind of like Dark Souls, I had to figure out who everyone was and what exactly was going on and what the terms meant and piece together a timeline and explore the narrative in a meaningful way. I had to listen and watch. But unlike Dark Souls, I wasn't digging through the remnants of objects and ruins and places, but rather digging through the lives of people. I felt a wave of emotions when I kind of pieced together what I thought was the story of Sarah Hazmati, and I finally figured out why she had all of those pictures of that person, and what exactly had happened to her. Tacoma rewards you for your unyielding efforts to figure things out, and I appreciated that so much. The forest is about saving your son, Timmy, from a man covered in red paint after you've crash landed on a forested peninsula. It's also inhabited by cannibals, so that's fun. You have to survive and find clues to his whereabouts so that you can rescue him. That's it. But there's weird stuff in this game. There's dig sites and boats and underwater caves and religious iconography and other weirder stuff I won't get into to avoid spoilers, but the game isn't exactly about telling you what happened and the story of finding Timmy is perhaps second to figuring out what has happened to this peninsula, what has happened to the forest. And a lot of the story is kind of told visually through tidbits and clues and notes and newspaper clippings and images and sometimes you kind of have to piece together your yourself as it's kind of all of this is scattered throughout the forest. There's nothing passive about it. There's a mystery here that you're meant to kind of unravel. And when you take a beat to really ask what the 
frick happened here? You become more immersed in its world, and at least for me, I get kind of more empathetic because I want to try to figure it all out. None of these games really force you to progress in a linear way. How you play in what sequence and where you put your attention can drastically impact how you interpret the game's world and story, which is just another cool element on top of everything else. Little is told passively, which is probably why at first I find playing these games for the first time pretty jarring and sometimes off-putting. Like there's just that, that brief moment of discomfort <laughs> and I'm used to my comfort food of storytelling in video games. The big bombastic cutscenes, the top-notch voice acting, the mocap, like put me in the theater baby and give me a controller and make me feel like I'm, I don't know, interacting with some big blockbuster. But I have really learned to embrace this discomfort of what I call archaeological storytelling in games. And what's exciting is that this way of storytelling actually is starting to get a pretty solid list of games. There are other games that I haven't gotten around to playing yet, but I would say are in this category and they're of no doubt kind of at the top of my games wish list. Her Story, Outer Wilds, and The Return of Obra Dinn are probably some of the most notable. These games really have shown how this idea of archaeological storytelling can be done well, but it also has proven to be a great example of something that is unique to the medium. You can't tell a Dark Souls story in a comic or a miniseries. That would undermine what exactly Dark Souls is, and I'm pretty sure that the joy of the narrative of Obra Dinn comes from it being a game and not a TV show. Which is really important that we do things in games that can only be done by games, and it's something that I hope gaming embraces more. Because there's this little quote by fantasy author Brandon Sanderson that You should play to your strengths as a writer, and to the strengths of the medium you're using to tell your story. You should play to the strengths of the medium you are using to tell your story. It seems so duh, so obvious, so simple, yet I find it such an elegant summation of why I think archaeological storytelling as an idea should be more present in the next generation of games and the future of gaming. The level of interactivity that comes from non-linear, investigative, and exploratory storytelling is something that no one else can do. You can't do it in books, TV shows, comics, nowhere else. And so shouldn't games be doing things and telling stories that no other medium can? Hey everyone, thanks for watching this. Don't forget to leave a comment because I always love having a conversation. Um, this is the fifth video in my sprint to get 10 video essays done by the end of 2020. Um, I only have two months left now, but you know what? You gotta try, eh? So um, if you wanna be a part of this kind of full steam ahead, uh, maybe subscribe or give this a share or talk about it on some space or whatever. Uh, so we can all get all aboard as we choo choo to 2021. And until essay number six, everyone, keep safe.